So hello everyone, this is Akshay here and today we're gonna, we're gonna discuss a stack question that is the reverse of stack, right? It's a very standard question and uh, yes, let us proceed ahead with this question and the solution, possible approaches and if you're new to this channel, please like, share and subscribe and hit the bell icon to get the regular updates. So for the viewers who are uh, view my video for the GOG PODD thing, so I know from two days I have been making the videos late at evening but uh, there's a good news for I just I needed to share that I recently shifted my company, changed my company, and that was uh, that was, uh, today was day two of my first com uh, second company, right? So that is why I was not able to make this video at the night itself. But okay, moving onwards from here, I will definitely try to make this video in the starting at the starting of the day, right? Let us zoom ahead now, and definitely I'll make one more video on which company I shifted, what's the other perks involved there definitely an outboxing and inboxing video and yes let us assume now so we need to, we are, there's a question that and uh, the requirement is that you, we need to reverse uh, the elements present in the stack so let's say the input here is stack and the elements are three two one seven six correct now we need to reverse it so the six will come at the top and subsequently seven one two three right so if you remember or if you know the stack orders the leaf order that is the last in first out right correct I want to reverse it. What I want to do that the last element uh, that is getting in should not be printed at the first, right? So that means I want FIFO. First in first order, I need to convert into this. So what's the data structure that is responsible for this ordering? That is Q, right? So if I just move all these elements into this a Q, let's say, right? If I keep on popping the elements from this tag, then what will happen? 3, 2, 1, 7, and 6, right? Then I will again iterate in this Q and I will and I will push. I will remove the elements one by one from the queue and push it in into my new stack. Or let's say the same stack. If the return type is void, let's update the same stack. So if you push the first element from this queue, then what would be three, then two, then one, and then seven and six. And then you can see that that's the answer. It matches with our answer, right? So that would be method one and iterative one. What would be the time complexity O of two n? Uh, the one loop is needed to push out all the elements from stack to queue and then queue to stack again. So it will be O of 2n. What is the space complexity? We are using an additional data structure to store the n number of elements in the queue. So that is why O of n is the space complexity. Let us pause this video here. Please pause this video here and then try to code this particular approach in your code editor. It's, it's very simple. And let us move ahead with the second approach then. Because this question you can see, it has asked us, you have to reverse the stack using the recursion. So let us see that approach as well. That would be a quite complex one because if you're not aware of how the recursion mm, uh, how the recursion is done if you're not able to imagine how how in the recursive stack the elements are stored and then coming out then it would be a bit difficult and i would advise before starting method two please watch my first video of the recursion place that what is recursion what is the non tail and tail and form it must be popping up here now it would definitely help you to understand the method too if you are a very new to recursion right let us pause this video and please try to code the method one and then we move ahead with the method two okay so that's the that's the exact code which we have just explained in the pseudo run pseudo run and the pseudo code as well and the dry run and the pseudo code as well <laughs> so that's the queue here we are popping out all the elements from the stack and then pushing it in the queue and then again popping out all the elements from the queue and push it in again the same stack so yes let us hit the summary button and since we are taking the O of n, so definitely constraint here again n should be less than 10 per 8 that is what size of the stack is less than 10 per 8 so yes this question has been successfully submitted now i have also made a video on how to analyze the constraint that what 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 i just said about 10 per 8 right so you must see that video as well because that's very important uh, if you are in an online assessment or in a you are doing a computer programming okay great let us move ahead with the c plus s code okay so that's the c plus s code and i hope it's very clear to you guys the same way that we have written in the java only the syntaxes have been changed and some uh, yeah syntaxes yep Great, that code is also submitted. Let us move ahead with the method to recursive approach. But before moving ahead, I definitely encourage you guys to please think of something. At least think of something that how we can proceed in a certain manner. Okay, let us start now. So method two is a recursive, right? So recursive, see, we can use stack. If we use a stack, then we can say that we, we have used stack, stack data section and taken an auxiliary space of O of N. But if you are if you are using recurse recursion, right? That is calling the uh, the same function in its function, right? Then you are you are using the space recursive stack, right? That is inbuilt. That is inbuilt, and that is why this this recursive stack also uh, uh, contributes in the space complexity, right? That is O of n, let's say. So what we'll do here is 
so since uh, if we are if you are doing a recursion on this particular elements then we will be pushing one stack the elements from one stack to another stack right right so will that will that mm, give us the right answer right so what i am saying is that let's say you have the element 6 7 1 2 3 3 recursive stack will just help you to push it into another stack and do some pre processing right if i push it into another stack then what will happen it will come here as uh so i'll just uh, first of all let us make a function let, so let us proceed with the function let's say per function uh, reverse and then we have the stack as parameter in the, in the in the given function right so what we will do that we will visit each and every element once of all right so there is one condition that if stack is empty then definitely we do not uh, need to pop out right so let us uh, in this case let us just uh, leave this space blank here we will decide what we can do for this particular base case now what we can do is we can store the uh, the the peak elements that is s dot peak right and then we need to we have to or let's say we can call the function again that is for the result st correct yes we can do that or it's better we can even remove this uh, base case from here we can just say that if the stack is not empty then store your peak the the first element of the stack the top element of the stack using as dot peak and then call the function again right so let us see what that what uh, what the us recursion flow se hame kya milta hai ye dekhte hain theek hai right so function of stack pehle ye ye stack pass hoga and then three will popped out right and then and then and then again the function will be called for another stack and then the, there the value x would be 2 then it will call for another then there the value x would be 1 then the value x would be 7 there the value would be 6 and for the next call it will pass as an empty stack function of empty stack would be called and it is it is empty then only would have to do something if it is not we have to do nothing right so it would get returned and at this point now our recursive stack has the uh, uh, what to say recursive stack mein hamare paas ye sare elements hai hamare paas 3 2 1 7 and 6 right so if i push 6 in my stack again let's say if i push 6 again i will i will just add here let let's say s dot push s dot push x will that make any sense so 6 would be pushed and then again 7 would be pushed and then 1 3 and 2 but if you see the same stack we have got again right so definitely this is not we cannot move in this direction definitely we cannot move in this direction so let me raise this thing we cannot move in in direction we cannot write here as dot push right so what are the changes we need to do we need to make one more function right because the elements order the elements we are getting the order uh, the order of the elements that we are getting using recursion is again 6 7 1 2 3 right instead we want the other way around we we want 3 2 1 7 6 right tabhi is element ko hum is stack mein push karenge to hamara answer ban sakta hai correct so that means instead of just printing here instead of just saying directly push it we need to call a one more one more function let's say push back right and we will call the stack we will pass the parameter stack and x now how this push back will work is you need to understand it very patiently man so let us let me give you a very quick dry run or uh, let me show you the pseudo code first okay so that is the pseudo code ye hamara pseudo code yaar yaar ab main aapko isko wapas se ek baar try and let me give you a very quick try run tabhi aapko is samajh mein aayega ki kaise ho raha right first time jab maine ye code likha aur maine jab try and kiya main bhi dimag ud chuka tha <laughs> right to aap isko dekho samjho aapko tarah samajh mein aa jayega theek hai so what will happen first of all that after this call or uh, let me let me make a new stack new stack which will have the elements as let's say just 3 to n and in the result i want 1 2 and 3 right so bas iske liye drawing dikha deta hu rest you will be able to understand right so again function of uh, this uh, this stack the x would be nothing but 3 we are we are at this function right and then function of 2 then function of 1 right so this this is nothing but x the value of x correct this value of x now for this after this uh the function will pass the empty stack right empty stack would be passed and then if it is empty then this function does not uh, uh, does not involve any steps to do so yahan se return ho jayega and then we have a hold of one here right and we we want this one to be put in our stack as the first value right so that is what this pushback will help it will check if the stack is empty then the next thing the next thing was to the pushback right next thing was to call the pushback for stack comma the x value right the st is stack and x is here now pointing to one let me change the color rep 
Okay, so it will see that the stack is empty. Yes, the stack is empty and it will add the x value. That is the x is nothing but one. Now the recursive call is over for this function of one, right? It will, the, now the call will resume for this one and it will again say, it will say for pushback of what? Pass the stack and then the x value. X is nothing but two for this call, right? It will check if the stack is empty or not, right? So it will check it is, it is not empty. So it will come in the else case, right? So first of all, it will store, it will store this one so st.p it would be store is one and it is popped so the stack is now empty at this point then again it will call the function of pushback again right so i'm just writing pb s comma the x value what is the x value x value is two x value is two right yes so it will see it will see that uh, what's happening here one mistake i have done is that uh, function of three right so our input stack is like this our input stack is like this then only the x the peak value was first three the three was moved out then two was moved out and then one yeah great so my answer must contains three two and one right hmm let us go with the flow now so pb pushback again is called for s comma two and it will see the first if is now it will go to the first if and it will see the stack is empty right so what it will do it will add this particular x in your stack and x is nothing but this 2, right? So 2 is added here. Your current stack is having the element 2. Then again, this and uh, this else statement is not else uh, is over, right? Hmm. So yeah, I different colors. So this pushback call was right? This y equals to 1 store. Hua. Then st dot s dot pop bhi ho gaya. Pushback bhi call kar diya, aur yahan se return aagaya, right? So the next statement here was to again s dot add y, right? So y ka value kya hai? 1, right? So the stack will now the updated elements as 2 as 2 and 1. Correct? Let us complete the flow. Main samaj sakta hai yaar, aap yaan pe thara ulaj gaye hoge. Right? Ye flow samaj nahi hai, but thik hai yaar. Aap uh, is video ko maybe ek bar complete karna, ek bar fir se dekhna. Dragon khud se karna, aapko samaj mein aa jayega. Yup. So let us move ahead. Still our work is not done, right? So f of 1 call is completed. Now f of 2 call will take place. And what will happen? that it will call for which thing it will call for pushback of s comma 2 correct now what will happen here pushback of s comma 2 it will see that the stack is not empty stack is already having one and two elements right so it will what it will it will it will fall in the else case and it will store the y s dot peak that it will store one then what will happen again then it will pop the element so my current stack is having the element just two and then again it will call the pushback that is s comma x and x is nothing but three here right three this is the x here that is being carried this is the x here that is being carried okay so there is one more work need to done that is adding again this y into stack but that needs to be wait until the recursion calls come back right so again so s comma three it will see again that uh, the stack is not empty it's already having the element two please uh, follow me up uh, uh, Right? Then it will again fall in the else case. It will again make a y variable and store the current element, top element of the stack, that is 2. It will remove the element from the stack. Right? The stack is now empty. Right? And again, it will call for pushback stack, comma the x value that again it is 3. Correct? Let me just uh, yep. Yes, so it will call for st comma three, and then again, it will. So there is one more task to be done, but that needs to be wait. That needs to be waited until the recursion call comes back, right? So now it will see that the stack is empty, right? Stack is empty, and then what it will do? It will add three here, right? Okay. So now this this uh, this uh, uh, call it returns back to its parent, right? And now this this line can be executed. So y is equals to two, right? So I need to add two in my stack. So it is three two. Then now control comes back to its parent again and now this line can be executed right so it is saying add one right so here i can say that three and two was already there i'm adding one and you can see that stack is now reversed and i hope that you were able to get it that why we need to call recursion two times right it was difficult for me also to explain you but i've tried my best to give to give you the example to actually draw the recursion flow for you guys uh, the board may look like a mess now, but yes, if you have followed me along from the starting and I have you have done the dry run with your pen and paper in your copy, so you would be definitely getting it. Yep, I am confident about that.
great so what is the time complexity for this thing so you can definitely see that this is restoring all the elements is taking over fn in this recursive stack we are visiting each and every element once now what is happening is once we are freeing this element let me use a, a highlighter once we are freeing this element this one or let's say once we are processing the last element then you are just processing one element again here right right so if you make a three call if you if you are making if you are storing all the elements in the stack then you are just visiting one extra element right now when you are at this point when you have freed one more element then the maximum call you are making is for two push back and push back right then again if you are, if you get from this f of 2 then f of 3 so you are making three three push back calls push back push back and push back so you can say that at the maximum at any point of time you are visiting only o of n elements correct so that is why the space time complexity will be o of n and at any point of time your recursive stack is responsible for storing n plus 1 elements you can see here for f of 3 you have stored f of 3 in your recursive stack you have called three times loop back function right so we are storing n plus 1 elements at any point of time in your recursive stack and that is why o of n would be your space complexity correct right? great i hope i was able to make sense to you guys and you were able to understand the approach the two approaches so Yes, I have written the pseudo code here. This is the first function, the first recursive call, and this is the second recursive call. Please pause this video. Maybe you are free to try the dry run for another another test case, and then please try to code this approach in your editor, and then we'll move ahead with the code. Okay, so ये रहा code हमारा Java में. That's the code present in Java, and I cannot explain you one more. I cannot give you a code walkthrough. I have already explained you each and every line how it is done, how the recursion uh, is getting followed across each line, how the recursion tree is behaving. So yes that's the code you can see the compilation has been already successful let us hit the submit button now great it has been done so let us see the c++ code now okay so that's the c++ code again the the compilation or the submission has been successfully made again there's the same code as we have discussed in the dry run and the java code so again the walkthrough is not required i guess Yes, you are always free to dry run the same uh, code for more of the test cases, and you will get a deeper and better understanding regarding it. Yep. Let us end this video on a good note, and let us meet in the next video of our stack playlist. Till then, keep learning, keep going. Bye bye, and take care, guys.